Alright, at 6.30 this morning, call the meeting of orders. Would you please rise for the play of the meeting? <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Councilman Bonds, would you please stand for the please? Our dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this evening and for the opportunity which we have to meet as a town council and, and to hear from our citizens. We are grateful for our many blessings of living in this great country. We are thankful for the rain which we have received and that the lakes are full. We ask the blessing over those who serve in the military that, that, they might be, that they will be protected and safe and bless their loved ones as they are away from home. Help us to do the right things for our town. And we ask for these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I wish the record reflected all council members are here present tonight. I'm going to move into announcements. Uh, this was presentation of awards. I'm sorry, it's the announcements. This was news from the Hickory Creek Municipal Court from Austin. And I'm going to read this real quick, and I believe there's a little award. I say a little award, a big award. But uh, from Austin, the Hickory Creek Municipal Court was honored as a 2012 Traffic Safety Award recipient at the Texas Municipal Courts Education Center Municipal Traffic Safety Initiatives Conference in Addison on March 20, 20 through 24, 2012. Applicants were judged on the basis of what their court is doing in terms of public outreach and traffic safety, the effort to reduce automobile crashes, traffic fatalities, driving under the influence, child safety offenses, <coughs> red light running, and other traffic-related offenses. The Creek Municipal Court started by placing traffic safety tips on the court's website with traffic safety handouts and other materials distributed at the court. During Municipal Court Week, the court had an exhibit focusing on traffic safety and safety for children. The court has also been working on a text-free driving pledge for all-time employees and mayor and council. This, this is a place to make a conscious commitment to not text while driving, to always wear a safety belt, and to encourage friends and family to do the same. The Hickory Creek Municipal Court has made a commitment and visible effort to promote traffic safety in the community. The Municipal Traffic Safety Initiative Program is funded by a grant from Texas Department of Transportation. This grant sponsors the Traffic Safety Awards to recognize municipal courts that have made outstanding contributions to the communities in the area of traffic safety. TNCEC is a project of the Texas Municipal Court Association, TNCA, composed of municipal judges, clerks, prosecutors, and court support personnel, which monitors legislation, attorney general opinions, and changes the case law to ensure that the 871 municipal courts in Texas remain up to date on the law. And that was through contact Hope Lockridge with the TNPC, TNCEC Executive Director. So that was a huge milestone for our court system and everything. Do you want to step up to the mic? Or? I know our judge here tonight as well. Uh, I'm Dana Martin. I'm the court clerk. This is Ramona. Mendoza Bender, she's my deputy court clerk and alternate judge, and our presiding judge, Anella Warner. And we would like
like to present this plaque on behalf of the Hickory Creek Court, court sorry, to the town of Hickory Creek. It says Texas Municipal Courts Education Center Municipal Traffic Safety Award. scheduled 
to be abandoned to another location within the park grounds. Thank you for accepting your responsibility and working to fix this situation. Any other uh, folks for public comment? We're on to item B1, public hearing. The hereby defending regarding a petition received by CTNTC Turbeville LLC requesting the establishment of Beaver Creek Public Improvement District Number 1, approximately 38.91972 years acres located within the extra territory of their jurisdiction of the town of Beaver Creek. That property is more particularly described as follows HA Swisher Survey Abstract Number 1220 and the MEP and PRR Company Survey Abstract Number 915 in County, Texas. The visibility of the public improvement project that confer with a special benefit on property within the proposed district and the visibility of establishing this district. So, would anybody like to speak on this? If you would, please come up to the mic and state your name and address. Okay, it's uh, 6.40, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing, move on to the consent agenda items. <coughs> Any questions from the council discussion? <coughs> All right, make a motion. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion we approve uh, agenda items C1 through C C6. Okay, council can make a motion for a second. That's my second call. It's C5. I'm sorry, C5. Yeah, C6. Well, okay, but okay. You're right. C6 is right. C6 is right. Second. Councilman Carter. Second, all in favor? Aye. Passes. Moving on to item one. Report from the Board of the Exiles regarding Lake Dallas and Bank School District. I think that's going to be next, next month. Presentation discussion on the Hillock Agreement for Fire Service between the City of Corinth and Hickey Creek Lake Dallas and Shady Shores. Yes, sir. Mayor, members of the Council, Honorable City Manager. <laughs> My name is Jim Brazana. I'm the Interim City Manager of Corinth. I'm here to kind of serve as an introducer, so to speak, of people who will tell you more about where we are with the proposed contract. Let me just say that uh, probably, I know some of you were on the original negotiating team or the units that represented each city about four years ago. We're in our fifth year of that. It probably doesn't seem possible. I've been here for about three of them. It's kind of uh, amazed as an interim. Tell you that we we went into taking the lead on this contract because City Print is the operator of the fire department with the three cities that are partners in that operation. We went into that with a couple of objectives. One, we didn't want to do any harm to the fire service. We wanted to make sure it stayed the same good quality that it's been during the life of this contract. Secondly, we wanted to make sure that any, any contract that came out of the final agreement was fair to all the parties involved. I think that was a major consideration four or five years ago. It remains a major consideration now. So we went into it with that as an objective. I will update you that we have visited with Lake Dallas and we have visited with Shady Shores. And they seem to be in general agreement. We put a couple of new things in there. Uh, one is we put some protection in that there was a uh, there would there would be a maximum charge to each of the cities. In other words, one of the cities asked to lift the cap. And we also put in there something similar to what's in the present contract, something that provided for some minimal increases, so that if we get into inflationary times. Contract would still be good for all the parties concerned. The other thing that we'll be doing in this contract that we're presenting will be the equipment replacement fund. I, I read a little bit of what happened during the first five years or when we completed this September contract. 
about halfway through, the city of Corinth was obligated and compelled to issue a bond issue of a million and a half dollars to replace a truck, I believe two ambulances, a fire pumper truck. And we, we've done that, but at the same time, I can tell you the thinking was that's the cost that probably ought to some way be figured into the five year renewal so that it's on a fair basis when that replacement time comes again. So we have a system in place in the proposed contract that attempts to do that, and I think you'll find it's a fair situation. What I'd like to do at this point is to call on our fire chief, Curtis Burke, to come up and walk through the proposal. And that's all it is at this point. We we're still waiting to hear from you, your response. We have, as I say, heard from the other two cities. And then from there, uh, whatever steps you want to take to try and negotiate this into an agreement and finish it, we would appreciate it. We'd like to get this done sometime in the month of April or May because budgets are being prepared. And there is an impact on all the cities. And it seems to be fair to spread across all the cities' impact. But there is a financial increase in the contract to do some of the things I mentioned here. So with that, if I could call on Curtis to come up and walk through it. And I also have with me our finance director, Leanne Bunselmeyer, who has been pretty good at the other meetings about explaining some of the financial things. So with that, I'll give you Curtis. Good evening. Uh, what we're going to try to do tonight is just kind of give you guys an overview of the fire department and just get you guys up to date on where we're at, what we're doing, what we have, what we provide. So I think all of you have the um, PowerPoint that I gave to Christy. And uh, we're just going to go through this real quick, see if you guys have any questions, just to kind of give everybody up to speed on everything that we're doing right now. Currently, the fire department um, staffs two full-time stations right now, as you guys know. Um, one of them is in Lake Dallas, the other one's up in <coughs> Corinth, around the border, Shady Shores, right behind Bill Ford. Ford. Uh, those are staffed 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Each of them has one engine, an ALS engine, which means it has paramedics on it, and an ambulance. Um, so we have two engines and two ambulances that run every day. Also up at Station 2, we have um, a couple brush trucks and uh, an ATV to do like the park areas and the core land we have. We have a lot of brush and a lot of wilderness we have to get into for fires or for people hurt or stuff, so we have stuff to do that. And also a uh, heavy rescue, which is for heavy vehicle extrication on the interstate or for anything, trench rescues, anything like that, anything from the storms. And we also use that to board up um, residences after we have a fire or have an incident. We can go out and fill holes the trees fell into or anything to get people to be able to stay in the residence. And that's up at Station 2. Um, currently, we have a staffing of 40 full-time members. 36 of those are street, or what we call operational people. They work 24-hour shifts, 24 on set, uh, 48 off. Um, so we have six people assigned to each station every day, except barring vacation, time off, and all that. The minimum will have at each station a spot. And that's three on an engine and two on a medic every day. Um, we also have um, two duty chiefs assigned every day. So anything that comes out from an extrication, air flight incident, a fire, big rescue or something, we'll get two chiefs out every day. We have three right now on staff, and two of them are on call every day to come out and handle anything that we've got big or anything over the club level in the street. Um, right now we care to do uh, emergency and non-emergency response, fire, um, EMS, advanced life support, and rescue. Uh, we also have uh, work with Louisville to support them on anything in the lake. They have a contract with the county to provide dive and boat service to the lake, but we'll back them up if there's anything they need or they have a dive or anything, we'll support them. And then uh, Denton has hazmat for this area that we get a lot on the interstate, so they provide the actual team and put all the money and training into it, and we go and help them out. So we have a lot of mutual aid agreements with all the counties and city or departments around us. So. A lot of people ask, well, is there a little home engineer or a Louisville medic or a dent in truck or something? Because right now, currently, it takes about, for just an initial structure fire, it takes us four engines, two ambulances, and a truck. We have two engines and two medics. So every time we go out on a fire, we get an engine from Little Elm, an engine from Louisville, a truck from Louisville, and a chief from each of those to come and help us fill in everything that we need to provide for a fire. So we get a lot of help every all the fire departments in the county work real well together, so we help each other out. And so it's a real good area to work. 
Other things we do is our community service areas. We do public education. We go to every school every year. Um, I think some of you guys have come, and I know the mayor has us come and done our poster contest for second graders. It's a big hit with all the kids, and it's a real good program for us. We do public information or um, warnings, updates, community service stuff. Post incident citizen support team stuff we're trying to get up right now. We call it the after the fire program. What it is is we're trying to uh, graduates with Citizens Fire Academy and any other volunteers to come in and when somebody has a fire or something, that group of people go out and assist them getting back on their feet from packing up their house to being able to get it stored or saving stuff out of their house, showing them how to get documents saved, how to replace money, how to replace IDs, how to do all that stuff, how to work with their insurance company. So that's the program we're working on right now and trying to get up and running. Um, we've got to do it in-house right now, but our guys don't really have enough time to put as much effort and as much time into it as we want to. So we're trying to use volunteers and some of our citizen <coughs> alumni from the Citizen Fire Academy to do that. We also have our Fire Prevention Bureau. Fire Prevention Bureau does fire safety inspections right now. We have 400 commercial fire inspections that have to get done every year throughout the four cities, so those are done every year. Uh, we do fire investigations, plan review for any new construction, code enforcement, and then life and fire and life safety code development. We help the cities get up to the right fire codes, do any amendments, all of the code sides of it. And then emergency management, we take care of all three or all four cities for their emergency management plans and their response plans. Um, we run the emergency operations center if there was any big uh, incident right now. We uh, monitor and test and keep up all the emergency warning sirens, so all the tornado sirens in town. We check them every month, have a uh, rig sitting on them every month, make sure they work, check the batteries, do all that stuff every year. And then any training and reporting and federal mandated training that councils or city employees have to do or something, make sure that that gets out to the cities and make sure that it gets reported to the state. Look at the next page there, that's kind of just an overview of the department for the last four years of uh, the different types of calls we run and different kind of things we do, kind of our workload measures. So it kind of breaks down the different kinds of calls we run and how many uh, community activities, all of our uh, uh, bureau activities with Fire Prevention Bureau and the training that we do every year. Just kind of a, see what kind of calls we want and what we're doing every day. Next page there kind of breaks it up by city so everybody can kind of see what Hickory Creek does. Um, over the last four years, she has averaged anywhere from 300 to about 390 calls. And then the second um, graph there is a breakdown of your city lives. And what this is, they're kind of confusing, but this is the way we have to report them to the government. We report every call we run to the state and to the feds, and this is the, the breakdown they do it. So that's why those things are called the way they are. Uh, but that's the breakdown of the calls and the uh, responses that we have in the brief. And then below there is the responses by each station to show you kind of how many calls station one runs versus station two. And kind of like that throughout the year. Now, as uh, my boss kind of stated, that we replaced some vehicles over this last five year uh, contract, or four years so far, one in our, in our fifth. Um, during the last, since the contracts were made, we've replaced the pumper, which is the new engine in station one. We've replaced, that should be two, three, sorry. When we first signed the contract, we replaced one of our medics that was in the original budget before um, we moved over to print, and then we've replaced two cents. Uh, we replaced three of the command vehicles that we have at the fire department that the chiefs have and respond to incidents in or in command out of. We replaced one brush truck. We've replaced our whole fleet of defibrillators and upgraded them. And we've got the money, we just haven't had the time to spec them out and order our a new fleet of air packs. So hopefully get to that very soon. Throughout the next seven or the next five-year contract, you'll see there the things that are due to be replaced. Um, this is what's due to be replaced. It'll come when it's time to do it, whether or not we do it, whether we can extend it a year, whether we have to drop it back a year or so. Within this one, definitely, we're going to have to replace the pumper. The medics will be, as they're come to, we'll at least have to replace one, but probably two. Command vehicles, once again, it depends on usage and the mileage and the maintenance costs of them. 
We have a support vehicle. Our heavy hydraulic tools are what most people know as the jaws of life as we cut vehicles open. Those are due to be replaced and needed. Radios, we're getting to a close point right now where all the radio systems are being rebuilt and our radios are so old that we can't upgrade them to the new systems that are going to be done. So sometime, the county's told us within this five year period they'll probably go to the new systems. We'll have to get radios to be able to talk to those again. Um, thermal imaging cameras, we replace those about every six years. Those, a couple of those come due. And then uh, our Polaris and the trailer that we use to haul it will be come due. So getting into the meat of the contract terms, what we've done is we've kind of left it pretty close to what it is. It seemed to be working for the last year. There wasn't any real big hiccups that we saw or that we really needed to work on. A couple of things that we're looking at is to do another five-year agreement. Um, give everybody the stability of five years. Um, one thing that we changed in the old one, it was the annual increase was CPI plus one. And uh, as everybody knows, CPI was pretty rocky over the last, the first year was a 5.8% increase for all the cities. Went down to a 0.6 for the last one. So sometimes we've had to, what we tried to do in our council one was at least put a four in it. And with that, we came back and put a cap on it. So kind of protects us on the low side, protects you guys on the high side, uh, depending on what the CPI does. Um, the only real increases that the fire department has asked for or that we're trying to do is we're just trying to um, cover the increase in benefit costs over the last few years and going into the future. And we lost our emergency uh, management coordinator position in this time, so we're going to get that, try to get that back to help us coordinate the emergency management side and some other <coughs> Issues that have been kind of lacking because of the lack of time and personnel that we've done. Um, when we put together our vehicle replacement fund, which we've had for a long, long time, but putting it down, it costs us about $1.3 million for our vehicle replacement fund, is what we're asking over the contract with this through all four cities. Um, and that will, what it costs us about $350,000 a year to actually fund it when it comes due. We have the money actually sitting in the bank. We don't have to go out to CIP. Um, and like I said, that still may, we may have something on the seven year schedule. If it's still in good shape, our guys take really good care of it. It's not mileage or broken and our maintenance costs aren't it. We extend it out or we, that also means if we have something go really bad during that time, we have a little money that we're replacing. It kind of saves our operations budget. Um, but like I said, we're looking at about $350,000 a year to fund that. We looked at that and said, well, that's way too much for even us, let alone anybody else to even look at. So what we've tried to do is break it down to where the first two years, it's only 200 split between the four cities, working up to 350 at the end. So at the end, then hopefully if we have for another contract, then it'll be there and won't even, nobody will be able to see it and it'll just keep going. We won't be begging everybody for money and we'll have all the equipment that we need to just keep so I'm going to turn it over to the real boss and let her come up and explain the money side of it. Mayor, members of the council, uh, my name is Leanne Klosemeyer and I'm the director of finance for Corinth. Uh, what we wanted to do on this last slide is kind of give you a historical uh, information of the contract the last five years. Uh, the first year that the cities entered in the annual report with the Corinth, the funding for the fire department from Hickory Creek was four hundred eighty thousand. With the CPI plus one that was built in on an annual basis, that contract is now up at 533000 And that is the amount that you are currently paying to the rent. As both Jim and uh, Curtis both mentioned, um, when we were looking at developing the budget for next year, we were very conscientious of the budget constraints that all the cities have, including the rent. Uh, we minimized the operational cost. We did not increase any just day-to-day -day basic operation costs for the fire department. And the major uh, increase is for the restatement of the emergency management coordinator position. So that is a $151,000 increase to the fire department budget. We use that as the base, and then we left the funding percentages the same that were in the original contracts to come up with the new funding amounts for the cities for the first year of the contract. Again, when we first started with it, we went in and looked over the five years, um, going into 2017, and we determined just based on increased benefit costs, uh, personnel costs, what we were going to need over that five years. And that's how we determined that we needed at least a 2% cap to, make, to be sure that we could maintain that funding uh, for the fire department. 
When we had our meeting with um, Shady Shores and uh, Lake Dallas, they both mentioned that they were okay with the deep, with the 2% floor, but they also wanted to protect themselves and, and all the city within the contract and wanted to make sure that we had a cap on that. So um, we, uh, they gave us some suggestions. We went back to our city council and our council agreed that, it, that a cap would be a good thing. So on the proposed contracts, we do have a 6% cap. So basically what this um, chart shows you is that in a minimum, um, after the first year, the increase would be about 11422 That's a, with a 2%. But then if it were actually to go to the cap of the 6%, the maximum would be about 34000 uh, for year two. However, just looking in the highlighted area of 2012-2013, uh, just with the basic operational cost, it is a 37949 increase for Hickory Creek, bringing that projected uh, base funding to $571,000. Now, please keep